Hello guys, welcome to my channel where we make videos that cover all you need to know about medical doctors and medical students. In today's video, we're going to talk about seven harmful practices on nursing mothers that are very common. I come from a part of the world where these practices are being done, even among educated people, although it's way, way more common among the uneducated, but the educated still practice some of these things. I had done an earlier video about those of babies and some suggested that I do concerning nursing mothers too because they are being affected as a result of that. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss my new videos which I drop twice weekly on Tuesdays and on Saturdays. And to my returning subscribers, thank you for returning to view this video once again. Now let's dive into today's video. I know this is another video that will make me way way more unpopular among our African mothers. <laughs> but then this video is going to debunk a lot of things and I hope these corrections are being effected to save the lives of a lot of mothers. Yes, a lot of nursing mothers have died as a result of these practices. The first is tying the woman's abdomen or pressing the woman's abdomen in order to be able to reduce the size of the abdomen. Now note that the woman's abdomen increases during pregnancy because it is growing to accommodate the growing size of the fetus. And usually after delivery, there is a massive reduction in the size of the uterus and this continues till at about six weeks when the uterus which initially enters into the abdominal cavity returns totally into the pelvis so all these practices do not in any way cause any reduction in the size of the abdomen however many women might notice that even months after delivery their abdomen would be bigger than previously it has nothing to do with your uterus two factors responsible for that could be diastasis recti in which the growing uterus stretches the erectus abdominis which is called the six-pack muscles and weakens them so because of the weakness there will be a protrusion of the contents of the abdomen which causes them to bulge out and make the abdomen big tying your tummy is not going to help you in this matter what will help is doing proper exercises that will strengthen the erectile muscles the other one could be as a result of extra peritoneal fat a lot of women gain weight as a result of pregnancy too and you have to do some you have to eat healthy to prevent that from happening and you also have to do some other things your dieting you know that dieting and exercise play a big role in seeing that these extra abdominal fats that are being gained are lost so don't tie or press the tummy it just wouldn't do anything it doesn't help in reducing abdominal size the next practice is giving hot meals and drinks in order to be able to wash the bad blood in the uterus yes after delivery a woman notices blood coming out from her vagina and this is known as lochia and this is made up of blood mucus and some uterine tissues the flow is usually heavier within the earlier days but later starts reducing till it totally goes and it totally resolves within six to eight weeks so many women are being stopped from taking cold water cold drinks uh, and other things because of that Please stop that. Whatever goes into the stomach does not affect the uterus as we think it does. So a woman can take her cold drinks, a woman can take whatever she wants to take. Stop restricting that. The next practice that a lot of nursing mothers are subjected to is being bathed with very hot water. This is usually done to reduce swelling and to help the body return to its previous shape. However, it's been found out that this has caused more harm than good. Many mothers have experienced complications which include third degree burns, infections, preeclampsia, cardiomegaly, and even heart failure. All these have been tied to the practice of bathing women with very hot water. A woman's body returns back to normal with time and these habits are not good at all to nursing mothers. Please, let's stop that. The woman can bathe with warm water and even clean her body as she deems fit. 
However, women are being advised, especially those who have had perennial tear and have been sutured, to avoid using the bathtub until the wounds have healed. Another harmful practice which does not only affect the mother but the baby is mothers are being restricted from eating certain foods and some of these foods are highly nutritious. Please eat healthy, take fruits, eat balanced diet because the child being breastfed by a well-nourished mother is way more nourished than a child that has been breastfed by a malnourished mother. So a mother needs to eat well so that the child will also grow well. Some of the meals to avoid will be highly processed food, some types of fish that are high in mercury, avoid alcohol, and other foods that are clearly stated by your health worker. Please don't stop mothers from eating healthy food. Please don't. The next practice is keeping mothers in very hot rooms. And this is indirectly because uh, the baby is being kept in the hot room with the notion that the baby needs hot, very hot temperature to thrive. And because of that, the mother too has to sleep in those hot rooms. In some places where it's cold, they even use hot coals, the burn coals within the room to keep it warm. This has been shown to be very dangerous because these hot coals can release carbon monoxide that is very fatal to any individual that is exposed to it to a certain concentration. A room that is not too hot or not too cold is optimum for both the mother and the baby. Ensure the room is well aerated also. Stop that. This has caused a lot of mothers to die. This has caused a lot of mothers to have some mental health issues as a result of the stress of going through this. The next practice is something that is very common in northern Nigeria in which mothers are being given something called kumun kanwa. It's like a soup made of potash and they're being given with the notion that it helps a mother produce more breast milk to feed the child. This has been shown to be linked with postpartum cardiomyopathy and cardiac failure and this should be discouraged. The quantity of breast milk a woman produces has more to do with how often the child circles, how well fed she is and her mental state. And if these are properly taken care of, the woman wouldn't lack breast milk. Yes, some start producing breast milk later than others, but when these three factors are being put in place, a mother starts producing breast milk as soon as possible. So keep the baby to suckle, make sure the mother is fine mentally, and also make sure the mother eats properly, and within no time, breast milk starts flowing. Don't give any harmful thing with the aim of making more breast milk come, especially this kunukawa. I don't know where else it's been practiced, but then whatever has been given to a mother that will help her produce breast milk outside this that have been mentioned should be discouraged, especially the harmful substances. The last one is something that is very sad and is being even exhibited by many educated women is that a mother that delivers via cesarean section is not considered a woman. In fact, some go as far as labeling vaginal delivery, normal delivery, and then cesarean section as abnormal delivery. This stigma has made a lot of women who cannot even deliver vaginally to risk kids, even when being told by medical doctors or told by medical personnel that they will need to undergo surgery. They deny that and go to attempt delivering vaginally and in the process could harm the baby or even lose the baby and lose their lives. I cannot tell you how many encounters I've had with such that when you suggest a serial section to a woman, they go in God forbid or Holy Ghost fire. So please no, there's no difference between a baby that has been delivered vaginally and a baby that has been delivered abdominally. And a woman that delivered vaginally is no more of a woman than a woman that delivered abdominally. So please, if you have delivered a baby via cesarean section, don't look down on yourself. Don't think that it's a bad thing that has happened to you. They do cesarean section in Israel. So there are Hebrew women that still undergo surgery and they are not less Hebrew than those that deliver vaginally. Some might even initially deliver vaginally 
and later on have to be delivered abdominally. So please don't risk your life and the life of your baby and try to deliver vaginally when there are clear contraindications towards that. And please let's stop stigmatizing women that have not delivered vaginally. Every woman deserves to be encouraged, every woman deserves to be loved, every woman deserves to be praised irrespective of the mode of delivery. So that's the end of today's video. What do you think about the video? What did you just discover that is shocking? What did you like? What didn't you like? Let me know in the comment section below. Also let me know what you think I left out. I will try to respond to every comment as soon as I can. And don't forget to also like the video and share with as many people as you think will find it helpful. If you're yet to subscribe to this channel and you enjoy videos like this, subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss my new videos which I drop twice weekly. Thank you and see you in the next video.